Good evening, creatures of the night. I hope you enjoy this episode full of dogman encounters. And I hope they terrify you like they terrified me. Don't forget to check out my new book, now available on Amazon.com, on Kindle, paperback, and hardcover. The link is on the description of this episode below. Enjoy the show. When I saw the dogman, I was 17 years old and about to be a senior in high school. I saw it in the Bighorn Mountain Range, which connects to the Rockies. This was up in northern Wyoming. I was there with two of my cousins, Aaron and Elizabeth, my Aunt Rachel and Elizabeth's friend Gwen. Aaron was 19 when this happened, and the two of us had bonded over our shared interest in paranormal phenomenon. Elizabeth and Gwen were both 15 at the time. We were camped out next to Park Reservoir, which is a lake that's pretty popular for camping. As fate would have it, when this happened, and maybe the exact reason why it happened, it was just us and an older couple for the weekend. I had spent the day four-wheeling in the sand with Aaron, and then we went fishing in the lake, trying to catch some trout we could cook up for dinner. Elizabeth and Gwen spent most of their time either inside the camper or swimming in the lake. My aunt just relaxed in her folding chair, enjoying nature or going on one of the four-wheelers herself. At night, we would sit around the campfire and tell scary stories, trying to creep each other out, you know, as one should during a camping trip. This night was cold, cloudy. The clouds were actually blocking out the view of the stars and you could only see bits and pieces of the moon as the clouds rolled by. Of course we had hoped for a better night, but we'd take what we could get. At least it was fun being outdoors. Aaron and I stayed up after the others went to sleep because we wanted to do some night fishing. He said the moon was full enough to go out on the lake and that it was the best time to go out there to get some trout. I don't know if that's true or not, but we did end up getting six fish that night. We kept on fishing until about 11.30, trying to get some bigger fish, but it just wasn't working out. Nothing out of the ordinary had occurred while we were out on the lake, but when we got back to camp it was a different story. I often wonder how much happened while we were gone, while the others slept. Was that thing at our campsite? Or was it trying to watch from the shore while we fished in complete ignorance? Aaron and I slept in a tent, while Aunt Rachel, Gwen, and Elizabeth slept inside the camper. We didn't mind, though. We preferred staying inside the tent. It was a perfect place to talk about scary stories, gossip between friends, and other things. I preferred a tent over a camper anyways. We talked for a while, but after that we fell asleep. Then, at some point in the night, I woke up to a piercing howl. It sounded like an injured dog or something. It sounded like maybe it was on the other side of the lake, which meant it was far enough, but not too far. I actually thought it was kind of neat at this point, thinking maybe it was a wolf, but probably just a coyote. If it was a wolf, it was pretty rare, and that'd be a pretty cool thing to see, but I knew it'd be too dark for me to see much outside the tent. I remember staying still, just listening to the sound for a moment thinking if there was a wolf just outside somewhere, I could brag about hearing it to Aaron in the morning. I tried to go back to sleep, but my body just wouldn't let me. I couldn't explain why, but I felt on edge. I thought maybe it was because of what we'd been talking about before going to sleep. I even thought about waking Aaron up to tell him about the wolf, but I decided against it. I didn't want to be ridiculed for being scared. After a while, I guess I was dozing off again but I heard something rustling in the bushes from behind the tent. It was then that I could feel my heart start beating faster. I hoped it was just a raccoon or a mule deer. I had seen bear poop earlier that day and hoped it wasn't a bear that had come to pay us a visit. I wouldn't have been surprised if that bear decided that it could get an easy meal from the campground. I thought about food that we might have left outside and started to worry. Bears around here are known to come into campgrounds looking for leftovers. There's signs all over the place telling campers to use the boxes and to put food away. We had a flashlight in our tent, so I grabbed it and decided to investigate. Don't get me wrong, I was still very nervous. My instincts were trying to keep me from leaving the tent. It was like my brain was screaming at me, don't go out there, but curiosity had gotten the better of me. I went outside the tent and shined the flashlight towards the direction of the noises, but I couldn't see anything. I didn't move very far from the tent at all. I stayed in place while slowly shining the flashlight, hoping I would catch a glimpse of the culprit, whether that be a raccoon or a bear. Instead, I saw absolutely nothing though. 
I figured it was just a deer that had passed by and went through the bush behind the tent. After a quick double check, I crawled back into the tent, being as stealthy as possible so I didn't wake up Aaron. By that point, my uneasiness had started to calm down, quite a bit actually, and I felt that I could fall back to sleep. I only slept for maybe an hour, I can't be sure. All I know is that when I opened my eyes it was still pitch black outside. I heard what sounded like the cooler crashing onto its side, spilling ice and soda cans all over the place, which slowly rolled to the ground. I immediately felt my heart pounding and my adrenaline picking back up. I was so afraid to get up this time. I didn't want to check it out, but eventually I found enough courage to finally grab the flashlight again. I slowly got out of my sleeping bag and heard the crumbling of aluminum, as if this thing was now digging into something. As quietly as possible, I unzipped the cover to the tent and kept the flashlight off in order to keep my location hidden, as if that mattered because whatever it was had already seen me and was staring at me with these bright amber eyes. I felt like this thing was looking right through me. There was something that was just not right about those eyes. To start, I'd say they were seven feet off the ground. Easy. Seven damn feet off the ground. What the hell could that have been? My heart pounded so hard I thought I was going to die. I felt like my heart was just going to stop or burst out of my chest. And then I pointed the flashlight at it. I shouldn't have done that. Today, I am still scared of what I saw that night. I saw this humanoid dog creature. It was dog in look, but human in shape, and it stood on two legs. It was leaned over the table, eating something. It was covered in ruffled jet black hair. It had hands on the front, not paws. Hands that were capable of grabbing things. I stood there, frozen in total shock. I couldn't even manage to scream. My legs wouldn't let me run either. The creature's gaze seemed to hypnotize me and keep me in place. That creature, the dogman or werewolf or whatever the hell it was, twitched and pointed its ears in opposite directions, then opened its mouth. It was horrifying. It had butter-colored canine teeth layered with streaks of brown plaque. It had purplish gums with black outlines above the teeth. I could smell this strong and disgusting stench of rotten meat even from my tent. I mean, it was so potent it made my eyes water and my stomach nauseous. I mean, this odor was so foul that it put the stench of sulfur and methane to shame. Honestly, I don't know if it was that thing's breath or body odor and I don't even care at this point. I just know that it was the most disgusting thing I've ever smelled in my entire life. But what it did next made my heart sink to the ground and left a deep scar in my memory. I swear to you, I watched this thing smile a wide toothy grin that spanned across its muzzle. It was like it knew why I was terrified and enjoyed seeing me like that. Then before I knew it, it swirled around and took off on all fours and back into the forest like it wasn't searching for food but just looking for someone to terrify. It knew we were there, but we didn't know it was there, and I think it got pleasure from that. I stood there like a statue, completely petrified from what I had just seen, until I heard a voice coming from the tent behind me. It was Aaron, asking why I was out of the tent. Not gonna lie, when he spoke, I almost shit myself. I just stuttered, too afraid to reveal anything of what I had just seen. I slowly looked over towards the tent. I could only see his outline. I didn't think he could see me all too well, but I still slowly shook my head from side to side, too afraid to speak. I climbed back into the tent, but any thought I had of ever sleeping again were gone. I stayed awake for the remainder of the night, and when morning came, I woke Aaron up to tell him the story. I started from the beginning, with the wolf howl and the rustling in the bushes from behind the tent, all the way to the encounter with whatever the hell that thing was. I told him he was just a few seconds too late, or else he would have seen that creature too. I thought for sure he was going to think I was crazy, or that I was just overreacting to a bear encounter. But fortunately, he believed me. He said my fear felt genuine to him, 
And even though he felt scared a little bit when he saw me up in the middle of the night, he was sure that it didn't compare to the fear that I felt. When the girls woke up and saw the mess, they asked what happened. I just told them it was a black bear, that it came through camp the last night, because I knew for certain that they wouldn't believe my story. We cleaned up the mess and left that afternoon after loading up the four-wheelers in the camper. I searched around the area for a print, but I didn't see any tracks that were left behind from this thing. The only evidence that it was ever there was the mess that it had left behind, and the scar in my memory that it left behind too. I didn't speak on the way back home, which was very unusual for me and everybody seemed a bit concerned. I was quite a talkative person on road trips, but I just stared out the window thinking of that creature that I saw, chills running down my spine again, and I just played that night over and over and over trying to come to terms with what I saw. My aunt asked me what was wrong, but I said I was fine, just tired. When I got home, I started to look up sightings of this thing in the Bighorn Mountains, but I couldn't find any information. Eventually, though, I did stumble upon something called the Michigan Dogman, and there were hundreds of sightings of this thing. Their descriptions of the creature were far too similar to my own to be a coincidence. I saw a dogman that night. It wasn't in Michigan, but I saw a dogman that night. So just be careful if you visit the Bighorn Mountain Range. There are some creatures out there that I'm sure you'd rather avoid. I live in South Minnesota on private property in farm country. My property is rather large and heavily wooded in most parts of it. There's also a small pond and a steep stream bed on our property. It was the beginning of November when I had my encounter with this monster. My wife and I had just finished cleaning up our yearly Halloween party. We had invited the entire family out and set up the haunted trail that the younger people in the family could enjoy. It was two days after the party. It was about 9 p.m. We'd finally finished storing all of the decorations and we also moved our five horses up to the main barn from their lockout pasture. We'd put them down there so we could use the main pasture for the trail. The horses didn't make it very easy though, and they bolted as soon as we opened their gate. This wasn't usually like them. We basically had to run up a hill about a mile to catch up, and then we just set out fresh hay and locked them in since there was going to be a hard freeze that night. I was just putting dinner in and was enjoying the television when my phone got a text message in the kitchen. I lazily got to my feet when I heard the horses going crazy again in the barn and I figured one of the farm dogs had gotten locked in with them. I mean, they do prefer to sleep in the hay instead of our carpet in the house. So I grabbed my spotlight and I walked out to the porch. Surprisingly though, I found all of the dogs there, and they were all staring at the barn too. I shine the light down on the lockout pasture, and I see the horses only on one side. They're all staring at the open barn door too. At this point, I'm still assuming they'd been spooked by something small. Maybe a bat was flying around, or perhaps a tool fell off the wall. They were spooked easily. I called back to my wife, who was upstairs, that something spooked the horses, and told her I was going to go round them up, and asked her for help. It took her a minute to reply, and she told me that she'd be out in a few. I called for the dogs to come with me, and then I started for the barn. I walked into the barn, and then looked at the horses, immediately trying to crowd around me. I mean, they were so eager to see me, they almost pushed me over. I yelled and they backed off, giving me some space. Then I see my wife's mare, named Cherry, and she kept rubbing her muzzle against me. Her eyes were wide, and she was terrified. I grabbed the stool that was nearby, and I began to brush her hair, and patting her backside. This was something that she enjoyed, and I was just trying to calm her down. But that's when I noticed these four long, parallel slashes going down her leg. I immediately thought there was a bear, and I started shining my flashlight into the barn. Besides a few tools and some buckets that were thrown about, there was nothing. I figured if there was a bear, it had smelled some of the garbage left in the upper level of the party. I was just about to start walking the horses back up when I noticed a bale of hay lying on the floor, and the twine was still on it. That wasn't there when I locked them up. At this point, I went rigid and I shined my flashlight up into the loft, expecting to see a black bear. But 
I could only see the first couple of feet up the loft. I had to climb up to see any further. I walked over to the ladder and noticed some dark gray hair hanging on a nail about halfway up. Right before I was about to climb up, I hear my wife start screaming from behind me. These terrified, blood-curdling screams, and the horses all start whining too. I look around to her, and she's shining her own light up towards the barn loft, and she yelled at me to look up at the window. I climbed up the ladder and took a look towards the window, and it wasn't a bear. At first, I thought it was one of the younger relatives that we had pulling a prank on me, but then this creature opened its mouth and started to pant like a dog, and I knew that this was no prank. It was about six feet tall, maybe a little more, and at least 200 pounds. It was halfway through the window to the barn loft. It was a dark gray color with a lighter shade of gray around its neck. Its head was very similar to a German Shepherd, but with a much larger muzzle. And its eyes. The closest thing I can describe them as would be the color of beer, but like when someone was shining a dull yellow light through it. And those eyes, they were locked right on me and its mouth was still open, revealing these sharp, jagged teeth. I remember they were stained brown. It was almost like it was leaning on the window with one hand resting on its side. Its hands looked like raccoon hands to me. It had long bony fingers and long sharp claws. I was terrified. I slowly went down the ladder and made my way over to my wife. There. We could still see this thing just staring at us and panting, but now it was on the other side of the window. My wife was about to scream again, but I clasped my hand over her mouth. She immediately grabbed my arm and clung to me. I mean, the terror that we were both feeling was just overwhelming. That creature put both hands on the window while it leaned down, and I whispered to my wife, on three we run and we don't look back. Before I could finish the sentence though, that creature jumped down and went on all fours, growling at us, looking like it was ready to charge. We took off. We ran the 25 yard gap between the house and the barn in record time. The dogs were all running to the deck in front of us. They seemed just as terrified. We could hear growling from that thing behind us, and as the dogs got there first, they spun around and started growling and baring their teeth at that thing. I didn't dare turn around at this point. I just wanted to make sure that my wife and I got to the house safely, because I knew this thing could destroy us if it caught us. With those teeth and those claws, we would be easy prey. My wife reached the door first, and she flung it open. When she turned to me, she screamed again, and finally I risked looking back. This thing was so close to me it had to be less than 10 feet. I reached the foot of the steps and jumped as hard and as far as I could. Thankfully, I landed inside with the dogs right behind me and my wife slammed the door shut. It was then though that I looked up and saw her flung backwards as the door was slammed into by that thing. It stood back up on two legs and stared down at us, baring those horrible teeth again. It wasn't all the way in though. I jumped up and I placed all my weight onto that door. It was barely open and I slammed it shut. I felt something heavy slamming its weight against the door though. I heard the wood begin to crack, but luckily my wife recovered and rushed to my side to help me shut the door and put the lock in place. Then we ran through the entryway, both screaming in terror, and locked every door that we passed by on the way to the kitchen. You see, the only window in the kitchen was a small one right above the sink. We hid under the sink, hopefully out of sight of that thing. We huddled there for about three hours, waiting and listening. Each one of our dogs seemed to be set at a different entryway in the living room, all observant, all waiting as well. We heard each one growling one after the other, like something was outside, stalking around the house. Not too long after that, we heard the horses whining, followed by some loud crash. I figured they'd broke down the gate and escaped back into the pasture. Or, at least I hoped they did, because I didn't want my poor horses ripped apart by that thing either. 
but I was too scared to go out there and do anything. I felt relief until one of the dogs started baring its teeth a moment later, and the assault on our house continued. Eventually though, around midnight, things seemed to start to settle down. The dogs weren't growling anymore or baring their teeth. We snuck into the bedroom, shut all the curtains and locked the doors. We tried to get some sleep. I know that sounds crazy, but I guess all that adrenaline, once it wore off, it was just exhausting. But even as tired as we were, every little sound made us jump. My wife was still worried about the horses, and just as the sun began to rise, we managed to fall asleep. When we woke up, we immediately got dressed and went to check on the horses. Thank God they were all fine. I mean, still scared witless, but fine. We patched up Cherry with the deep gashes on her leg, and we went over to the barn door to see what needed fixing. What we saw surprised us and still to this day unnerves me, because the latch on the barn door had been undone and flipped up the way a person would do it. It wasn't broken through like an animal would do. No animal I know would open up a latch like that, so what the hell was that thing? The only term I could think of would be werewolf, because that's exactly what it looked like. I realized this thing, whatever it was, had to be extremely intelligent, and that just made it all the more horrifying to me. That day we went into town and got a deadbolt for the barn. We went to a sporting goods store and bought a gun, too. After that night, we didn't have any more encounters, unless you count the horses refusing to leave the barn a few weeks later. I asked my nearby neighbors if anything strange had happened to them on their properties, and all but one said no. It was our neighbor that lived a few miles south of our property, and he told me they lost a stallion a few weeks prior to my encounter. I asked if he saw anything, and he gave me this really funny look. He said it looked like a bear got to the stallion really bad. It tore the stallion up pretty good, too. The way he looked at me, though, it was like he knew something, and I wondered if he was hiding something, like a story that nobody would believe, maybe. I didn't push the subject, though. I mean, I didn't really want to talk about it any further. Since then, I can't look out at the woods the same way anymore. If things like that are out there, then who knows what else is. I don't feel safe going fishing, camping, or even horseback riding anymore. I will say this to you though, if you're outside at night, always watch your back. Trust your instincts and the reactions of your animals because they're the ones that told me that something was wrong in the first place. I really think what I encountered was a werewolf that night. I just don't have any other explanation for what it could be. It was almost man-sized. It wasn't too tall. I didn't see a tail. The way it looked at me just made me think it, it knew who I was or something. That it realized what it could do to me. And then it had this level of intelligence, like wild animals just don't have. It was almost like it was self-aware. And even like it knew what it was capable of. Any insight on this would be nice because honestly I'm just curious to know what it was that we encountered. And I sure hope that we never encounter anything like this ever again. Because that amount of terror that we felt that night was something that you can't even comprehend unless you see something like this up close. I pray for everyone out there listening that they never have an encounter like this of their own. Because you might not be as lucky as my wife and I. If it wasn't for the two of us working together and shutting that door and locking it. If it wasn't for my wife seeing that thing before I got up into the loft, we might not even be here to tell you that story today. I thank God every day that we got out of that encounter alive, and I pray that if anybody else has an encounter with that thing or something like it, then they're lucky enough to get out of there too. My name is Eric, and I'm an officer of the Department of Fish and Wildlife in Washington. I have a wife and four children. A typical day of my job can range from calls about bears, coyotes, cougars or wolves, all the way to human problems like poachers, druggies, and scumbags. So I never know just what my day is going to entail, but what I'm about to tell you is the weirdest case I've ever been involved in. 
Now know this about me. I've been shot at. I've actually been stabbed. I've been involved in over a hundred successful drug busts. I've been chased by a bear. I've used a tranquilizer gun to relocate bears and cougars. I've even been kicked by a deer I was trying to pull out of a fence. It broke my radius when it kicked me. But this case? With this case, I've never seen anything more strange. It was 9.45 on a Tuesday night. It was early April of 2003. This couple had some property out in Stevenson, and they called about a large wolf on their property. But both the owner and his wife felt unsafe, and they told dispatch they were actually in fear of their lives. Now, I've dealt with a wolf before. They're smart and powerful, but they don't like confrontation. Usually they'll just skedaddle if there's people around the area. I just happened to be on call that weekend, and I had to drive about 45 minutes to Stevenson. Then I drove about another six miles or so to their cabin off this old road. I was literally out in the middle of nowhere at this point. I parked my vehicle and got out and took a look around, shining my flashlight around trying to catch a glimpse of this wolf that these people were scared from. But I didn't see anything. In fact, nothing out of the ordinary was going on, except for how quiet it was that night. Anybody that's ever been out in the forest knows how loud it is, even at night. It doesn't matter if it's day or night, actually. There's always some kind of critter chattering around, but this air was just dead silent that night. I knocked on the door, and I was greeted by the old man and his wife. For this case, we're just going to refer to them as James and Annie. They invited me in, and I asked them to tell me what they saw, since I didn't see any wolf out on the property. James told me that they both witnessed this wolf. They told me that the first thing they saw was it just running around on all fours, just around their property. And I thought to myself, well, of course it was running around on all fours, it's a wolf. What else would it be doing? I asked them how big it was. They told me it was the largest wolf they'd ever seen. And it wasn't the color of any wolf they'd ever seen either. It was a dark brown with long shaggy hair and a tan chest, but the size of this thing is what they couldn't believe. When I was listening to them, I really didn't believe it either, to be honest. James told me he put this wolf at no less than 500 pounds. I actually laughed and said, sir, wolves don't get that big here, but Annie stepped in and confirmed what they'd seen. She told me at first she thought it was a bear until she saw its muzzle. That's just how big this creature was. A wolf the size of a bear. To humor them, I asked what else happened, and they said it was running around and stopping and then sniffing the air and stretching out. They said from foot to shoulder this thing was probably four feet tall, maybe even taller. And again I told them with all the respect that I could muster, that wolves just don't get that big. At this point, James got a little angry and told me, I know what I saw. Now could you please just listen to what I'm telling you? I swear to you I'm telling the truth. We are not crazy. I decided right there to just hear them out, giving them the respect that they deserved. I sat down on their couch with them and listened as they told me the story. All the while they were talking, I was thinking to myself that this has got to be a case of mistaken identity. Of course it's just a bear out there. They told me they didn't see a bear, but wolves couldn't be the size of a bear. It was just impossible. The only thing that confused me was these people here could distinguish between a wolf and a bear. They'd seem like they'd been out in the woods their entire lives. So then I just started thinking to myself, well, what else could it have been then? They told me as they watched this thing stop and stretch out again, and then it looked like its joints were shifting or something. At this point, they stopped using the term wolf, and actually started using the term werewolf. I stopped them right there and said, you mean to tell me you think there was a werewolf out on your property tonight just looking around your windows? Annie asked if I was calling them liars, but I shook my head and said, absolutely not ma'am. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of what you saw, and I don't think it was a werewolf. They said this werewolf stood up on two legs and began walking around 
and looking around their property like he was trying to find something. At this point, I could see both of them shivering, and their eyes were tearing up from fright as they told me what they saw. I made a mental note to myself that even if this was a case of mistaken identity, these two seemed very scared, and at least that made me believe that they'd seen something out there. Annie told me that when she saw this thing stand up, she'd never been more frightened in her entire life. They told me they saw this thing in their kitchen window, looking right in like it was trying to find them or something. I asked them to show me the window, and they took me to the kitchen. I looked out the window and noticed that the ground was pretty far down from where I was standing. I also noticed that James and Annie were both just standing in the corner. They weren't actually in the kitchen, just peering through the doorway. Again, I noted how scared they were. I told them I was going outside to get a better look. They both decided to stay inside. I went over to the window and looked at this thing. It was directly above my head. I'm six foot two, so if this was a wolf, it had to be some kind of deformity because no wolf could stand over six foot two and look in a window. So again, I thought to myself, it had to have been a bear, but I kept thinking that these people swear it wasn't a bear. And like I said before, they seemed to be people that had been out in the woods their entire lives. They wouldn't just mistake a wolf and a bear. I looked around again, and there was nothing. I looked around the window to see if maybe this wolf or bear or whatever it was was standing on something to peer into the window, but there was nothing that me or the wolf could have stood on. I looked up at the window again and finally saw James and Annie brave enough to be in their kitchen, although they were both just staring out of the window at me. They had concern written all over their faces. I didn't believe that they saw a werewolf, but they seemed so sincere that I couldn't help but want to help them. I went back inside, and I did my due diligence trying to get to the bottom of this report. I asked them if they'd been drinking or doing drugs. They told me that there wasn't even any alcohol in the house. But then James chuckled and said, Not after tonight, though. I'm getting me a drink again. I asked for the description of this creature again. They said when it stood up, it was peering into the window, but almost like it was hunched over, looking down through the window. So they actually put this creature at about seven feet tall when it was standing on two legs, and about four feet tall, maybe even taller than that when it was on all fours. They repeated the color to me, dark brown with a very shaggy pelt, shaggier than the gray wolves that they've seen in the area, and this thing had a tan chest. It also had a long bushy tail that almost dragged the ground when it was on all fours. They told me the paws looked massive, almost the size of a lion's paws that they'd once seen at a zoo at some point in their lives, but it was the front paws they described as something I've never heard anyone describe them as. Hands. They actually called them hands. They didn't say claws. They didn't say paws. They said hands. So I corrected them and said, you mean paws, right? They both shook their heads, and James said to me, No, sir. This thing looked like it could grip something with those hands, like a doorknob or a rabbit if it was trying to eat it. They weren't paws at all, if you ask me. And then they told me it had a long muzzle, just like a wolf. Big, tall, triangular, pointy ears, just like a wolf. They said if they didn't know any better, they would have thought it was a wolf but throwing in the fact that they saw it walking around on two legs and the sheer massive size of this thing, they knew it wasn't just any old wolf. And even if it was, it was a massively overgrown wolf. They brought up the term werewolf again after that, and I repeated their story to them, for clarity's sake. Now, let me get this straight for you guys. Not one single detail in their encounter changed the entire time I was talking to them. I knew they had seen something, but again, I couldn't just place what it was. My mind was racing, trying to figure out what other type of animal could be out there, and I started ticking off the things that it couldn't be. It couldn't be a person playing a prank on them because of how tall this thing was. It couldn't be a wolf because of how big this thing was, and it couldn't be a bear because of the description of the muzzle and the tail. They just don't match a bear, or at least any bear that I know to exist. So I did the only thing I could do. 
I did one more walk around, trying to find some kind of evidence as to what this thing was that they saw. I promised them that I'd try to get to the bottom of it and find out what it was. I wanted to know what they saw out there too. I walked around one more time, and I do admit that when I shined my flashlight on the ground, I did find something that resembled wolf footprints, but these were bigger than any wolf print I've ever seen in my entire life. At that point, I'll also admit, I did get a slight shiver down my spine, but I couldn't tell if it was because of the cold or if I was actually starting to believe their story. Was there actually something out there that we can't explain? Although, I'm damn sure it wasn't a werewolf that they saw up on their property. I went to the porch again since they were still inside refusing to come out, and I told them to stay inside for the night, just to be on the safe side, and to call me directly if they needed any more help. I checked on them in the morning and a couple of days after that, they didn't have any more signs of that creature walking around out there. I guess I just considered it a case closed. Years went by, and I didn't give this case any more thought since they never reported seeing that creature again. It wasn't until years later that I actually heard the term Dogman. I looked it up, and I found out that there are people that see this type of creature all over the world. Now I'm still not saying I believe this story, but I am a firm believer that if as many people that say they saw this creature are actually telling the truth, then who am I to say that a creature like that doesn't exist? I guess that entire experience and everything I've learned afterwards is just food for thought. Sincerely, Eric in Washington. This encounter happened in Southern California on my grandparents' property. Their place is about four acres and their house is close to the road. This encounter happened when I was six or seven. I used to visit my grandparents every two weeks on the weekend. It was a three hour drive from my house through the desert and my dad and I always took our old Ford F-250 truck and my dad would buy me things like toys or video games when we visited. This is an important detail to the story because that day my dad bought me a Nerf gun and when we arrived he told me to leave it in the truck. We made it there around six o'clock in the afternoon in the winter so there was still about half an hour of daylight left. We ate dinner inside and I began to play with the toy cars my grandpa let me play with when we visited. At one point, I asked my dad to see the keys to the truck so that I could show my grandpa the plastic rifle that I had. My dad answered with a simple sure and handed me the keys from his pocket. Our truck was parked about 30 feet from the house. My grandparents' house is elevated about five feet off the ground with a porch that had two entrances, which was also elevated. There was a fence to keep people from falling off the porch, which was pretty old and would creak if you leaned against it. With the full moon out that night, it was bright and it was particularly windy. It was around 9.30 or so when I went outside to retrieve the blaster and my dad chatted with my grandparents, who only spoke Spanish. I began walking to the truck nearby when I heard rustling in the nearby plants, which I thought nothing of because of the abundance of small animals in this area. Assuming it was a squirrel or rats, I went right to the truck and opened the door. I struggled to find the rifle, so I sat back down in the passenger side seat and looked out the window. Had I not climbed in, I might not be here today to write this story because that's when I saw it creeping in the tree line, keeping an all too close eye on me. It appeared to be hairy and had dark yellowish eyes that peered back at me. Its fur was black with a tinge of red and it blended unnaturally well in with the plants. When I noticed it, it came running right towards the truck. I slammed the door and locked it. I looked up from the locking mechanism and I peered through the window only to see that thing was gone but I knew it wasn't really gone. So I waited for my dad to come outside to get me. I was really little, so I didn't think of honking the horn instead of waiting, and I waited for probably 20 minutes. That's when the car suddenly began to shake violently. It rocked back and forth so hard the entire truck moved, but I couldn't tell where the creature was. And then I heard long scratching sounds coming from outside near the rear of the truck, followed by a loud thunk on the side window and a tap, then another light scratching sound. They say these encounters make grown people feel like children. I felt like I was gonna pass out from the sheer fear that I felt, and what I saw next made me feel paralyzed. I looked up and I saw this wolf-like thing staring at me with these dark yellowish eyes. 
It growled loud enough to hear from inside the truck. It had drool dripping from its mouth. I first thought it was a bear looking at me from the trees, but as this thing peered into the window, I thought it was more like a wolf. When I looked at its arms and the way it looked into the truck, I wasn't sure what the hell it was. Its paws were more like hands, and it just simply watched me from the outside of the truck. It stared at me for a lifetime as I hid. I felt completely helpless, even though I was close to my family. They knew nothing about this creature inches from me threatening my life. Looking back on it, something that size could have easily smashed through the window. Maybe it knew my family was inside and it was trying to stay quiet. I feel nothing but dread writing this, and looking back on it, it could have broken the window and no alarm would have sounded. So who knows if there would be any remains of me at all that my family could have eventually found. This thing ran away on two legs very fast, and it looked back and made what looked like a terrifying smile. I noticed it had a long bushy tail like a wolf's, and at the end of that moment my dad finally came outside looking for me. I didn't know what to say or what that thing was. He found me and I was just so scared. He asked what I was afraid of, and I simply told him about my encounter with a bear. My dad saw the scratch on this truck and didn't really care. He was just worried about me. But the story doesn't end there, however, because later that night, that porch creaked and I could hear these heavy footsteps outside. I was asleep alone in the living room. I could see it was the same creature looking through the windows, which were close to my toes, and that thing just stared at me. It scratched at the glass as if measuring the density of it, and then just walked away. In the morning, that window was cracked. I didn't sleep much that night, and I think that thing broke the window to taunt me, as if it was saying, I could have gotten you in that truck, and I could have come inside that house. I'm grown now, and six foot two, and unlike others, I want to see this creature again, so I can get a better look at it. I would have taken a picture of the scratch, but my dad had that truck fixed to prevent rust a long time ago. I never saw that thing again, and my grandparents moved closer to us for medical reasons a few years later. So I might not ever see it again. And while I say I want to see one, I believe it's a good thing that I still haven't. This happened to me and three of my friends near Lake Arrowhead in 1999. All four of us were only 21 when this happened. It was the first weekend in September, and it was still pretty hot, so we decided to take the weekend to ourselves and go camping. It was myself and my three friends, Jeremy, Jonathan, and Aaron. We got there on a Friday afternoon, after we all finished work for the week, and quickly got to setting up our tents. We'd be sharing tents for the weekend, two to a tent, me and Jeremy in one, Aaron and Jonathan in the other. The first night was completely fine, until sometime really late in the night, probably around 2 or 3 in the morning actually. We were all in the tents by then, and dozing off, when we heard these really loud howls. It was enough to send shivers down my spine, because I knew it didn't sound like any wolf I'd ever heard. The most unnerving part about all of it though, was that the howls came from our left. And then about 20 seconds later, another set of howls sounding just like the first ones, came from our right. They were both pretty far off in either direction, but whatever these things were, they were definitely communicating with each other, and if they decided to meet up, we might be right in the path between them. I remember hearing Jeremy unbutton the holster from his gun, and grunt to me that whatever was out there sounded really big. He just hoped it wasn't hungry. But that was it for the night. We dozed off after that, listening for another howl for a little bit, but nothing ever came of that, and then we fell asleep. The next morning, we talked about it to Aaron and Jonathan, but neither of them had heard it. They were both asleep already. Jeremy just chalked it up to a wolf or a coyote, but I just wasn't so sure. After breakfast, we went on a hike for a few hours, and at one point we came across this area where the trees were all scratched up. They had really big claw marks about seven feet off the ground. Jonathan pointed out that bears do that to mark their territory, and he wanted to leave the area so we wouldn't run into whatever bear made those marks. None of us argued with that. We all thought it was a good idea. But I should also mention that around that area was this very distinct smell. Like rot. 
there was a very pungent odor to the whole area, just like rot and death. We got back and basically just hung out the rest of the day. We made dinner, had a few beers, not even enough to get us drunk, just enough to relax. We made a fire again and just sat around laughing with each other and sharing those stories. Jonathan just had a son a few months ago and he had a bunch of stories that he was sharing with us. It was just a fun time with all my best friends. Then about midnight everything went to hell. We started hearing that loud barking sound off in the distance. It was weird as all hell. I'd never heard anything like that before, and my mind immediately went back to the howling from the night before. I looked over at Jeremy and he had this weird expression on his face, like he was waiting for something to happen, like he was going to spring into action or something. It just gave me that feeling that you have in your stomach when you get dropped on a roller coaster. Then everything went absolutely quiet. One second, there were all kinds of bugs and birds and frogs and stuff making noise, and then the next, absolutely nothing. The only thing I actually heard was Aaron's breath catching in his throat, and then Jonathan whispering to us, asking what was going on. I could hear the fear in his voice. We all just sat around that campfire, staring at each other, wondering what was going on. I saw Jeremy take out his gun and set it in his lap. I looked around the campfire again at my friends, hoping that at least one of them had a good explanation about what was going on, but they all just looked as scared as I was. And then we heard something walking through the underbrush. It was a very distinct crunching noise that sounded like whatever it was was on two feet. Very human. Very meticulous. Very careful. But also, very heavy. The noise was coming from behind me, so I spun around to face that direction. I actually scooted closer to Jeremy, too. I guess I just wanted to be by the only person that was smart enough to bring a firearm. Then the footsteps stopped right outside our line of view. It was like whoever or whatever was out there was just playing with us. Like it knew that it was standing right on the cusp of being seen, but it was still being hidden by the shadows. I had this fleeting hope that it was just someone playing a prank on us, but with those weird barks and howls and even those scratches in the trees, my imagination was running wild and definitely getting the better of me. Then that thing started making a sound like it was claws scraping on the bark of a tree, and Jeremy called out that if someone was out there, they better stop because he had a gun. And then those grunting noises started. It sounded almost like a gorilla when they make those grunting noises to intimidate people, but it was just different somehow, more wild. And I know it's weird saying that this noise was more wild than a gorilla, but it's just hard to explain it any other way. I guess feral would be a good term to use too. Jonathan whispered that he thought it was the bear and it could have been making those scrapes in the tree earlier and it followed us back to our camp. I actually hoped he was right because four grown men with a firearm could scare away a bear, especially if we were that terrified and needed to defend ourselves, but whatever my imagination was conjuring up would be a lot more difficult to handle than a bear. I was sure that a damn Sasquatch was about to walk into our view at some point, but man, was I wrong. Looking back, I think Sasquatch would have been less terrifying. When the scraping stopped, the forest was still absolutely silent. It was like every animal, big to small, was hiding from this thing. I wanted to hide too, but we had nowhere to go. And then I smelled that familiar, nasty, rotting smell. And so did my friends, because I could hear them sniffing and gagging. It was bad. It was really strong. And there was also this very strong scent of pee just at this point, too. I didn't smell that before, when we saw those scrapings, but I definitely smelt it then. And then that thing started moving again. It seemed like it was actually circling us. We could hear it moving around our camp, and it was still sure to stay out of the light. It was smart. That is for damn sure. It grunted again, 
but this time it was louder, and if I'm not mistaken, angrier. I really felt like it was trying to intimidate us. Well, let me tell you this. It was definitely accomplishing that. That's for damn sure. Then, any hope that I had that it was a person messing with us flew right out the window. Because this thing let out this roar. This blood-chilling, heart-stopping roar. It was the loudest thing that I've ever heard in my life. I could feel it in my chest. All four of us jumped to our feet and huddled together around the fire. <laughs> it must have been a sight. Four grown men, each over six feet tall, each fit and athletic in our prime, clutching each other in the middle of the night, trying to protect ourselves from whatever the hell was out there. All of us shaking in fear, standing by this puny ass little fire. And that's when something big started moving around in the shadows and I actually caught a glimpse of it. I heard the crunching as it darted to the left of us. My friends heard the sound too, but they didn't see what I saw. What I saw was big, taller than us, and I mean way taller than us. It looked like it was on two legs. I thought about Sasquatch again and actually said it out loud. Nobody seemed to argue it. Nobody seemed to think that it was different. Maybe they were all thinking the same thing. I pointed out where I had seen a glimpse of that thing, and everyone stared in that direction. But honestly, I think that that thing was just distracting us, because Aaron started yelling and moving away from us in the direction that I saw that thing. But he was looking in the other direction now. We turned to look at what he was yelling about, and that's when we all got to see this thing for the very first time. It was not a Sasquatch. This was something else. When I describe this thing to people, I tell them to think about a Sasquatch and how it has primate features, very ape-like. Then I tell them to take away all the primate features and replace them with canine features. That's what I saw. It was seven and a half feet tall, easy, extremely wolf-like, but it was standing on two legs. I saw it every time I closed my eyes for months after we came out of that forest and I can still see it when I close my eyes every now and then. Over seven feet tall. Fawn, I believe the color is called, that I use to describe this creature. Like a boxer dog. But the fur was long and clumpy though, like an orangutan that I saw at a zoo once. It had longer hair on the chest and its back, which gave it this mane-like appearance. It had a long snout and a black nose that had a scar across the top of the muzzle. That scar went from one side of the lip all the way across the snout to the other side of the lip. The teeth looked sharp and white and a couple of inches long at least would be my guess. The ears were triangular like a German Shepherd. I didn't see any tufts of hair on those ears, but it was the eyes that disturbed me the most. Not because of the color, which by the way was this orangey yellow color that almost looked like it gave off its own glow. It wasn't the fact that these things were shining, but it was because of how human they looked. Like I said before, this thing seemed extremely intelligent, but looking at this thing, you could tell that even though we didn't know what it was, it knew what it was. It knew what we were and it knew what it could do to us, with or without Jeremy's gun. Because now looking back, the sheer mass of this thing, I don't think his pistol would have done much damage. The back legs of this thing were thick and muscular, very strong looking, and it stood what's called digit grade, like a dog, on its toes. The hair on the legs though was thinner, but not thin enough to where I could see skin underneath. It had a broad chest that was also very muscular, and the front legs, or arms I guess, were very long, almost down to the knees. It looked like it could have been on all fours, with no problem. And if it was on all fours, it probably would have had this sloping back like a hyena. I think that covers all the details that you asked about. One other thing, I did not see a tail, but that doesn't mean it couldn't have had a tail. 
I know all of this sounds terrifying, right? Having this giant werewolf standing just a couple of feet in front of you at your campsite with nothing but a little handgun, but it wasn't over yet. We could hear something else moving in the shadows behind it. I was terrified that it was the other thing that was howling the night before. There were two of them out there, that's for sure, if those howls were coming from these creatures. And the worst part of it was they were between us and the jeep. The only vehicle that we took out there. The only thing that could help us escape the forest. We could have went into the tent, but that wouldn't have stopped those things from getting to us. They could have slashed open the tent, no problem. I don't even know how long we stood there just staring at this thing. It honestly could have been a couple of seconds, or it could have been a couple of minutes. Time just seemed to tick differently during this encounter, and again it's hard to explain, but I really don't remember much about the time after it showed itself. I remember seeing it, I remember hearing the other one, and I remember nearly pissing myself because of the boom from Jeremy's gun. He popped off a couple of shots, and I think that might have snapped me out of whatever trance I was in because I remember after that Jonathan grabbing my arm and basically dragging me to the jeep after those things darted off into the forest. And then we were speeding away. It's so weird because I remember every single detail about the rest of the entire trip. I can remember what we were all wearing that day and the day before. I can remember the songs that were on the radio, even how our camp was set up. But those minutes or seconds, or however long it was, are completely black. Jonathan was practically in hysterics during the drive back. He just kept asking over and over, what was that? What was that? Aaron kept telling him he didn't know, and that we didn't know, and to stop asking and just concentrate on driving. Jeremy sat next to me in the back seat in silence. When we got out of the woods, I told Jonathan he needed to stop because I was about to be sick, but he wasn't sure that it was safe to pull over. Aaron told him he could slow down, that he felt the coast was clear. When we pulled over at the gas station, I lost my dinner. I remember staggering towards the truck, holding onto the door to steady myself and looking back at the forest. It was literally miles away now, but it was still so intimidating because of what we just saw. Then I looked at my friends, and they all looked like we'd just been through something horrible and survived it, which I guess we had. All of us were on edge. After that, we planned on driving all the way back to Temecula, but we ended up stopping in Riverside for the night and grabbing a motel room. All four of us stayed in the same room that night because we were so scared. We barely slept, and it was a very restless sleep. We shared beds and didn't even care. We finished the drive in the morning and never went back for our own things. We ended up calling the forest service and told them that we were chased out of there by some kind of wolf on two legs, but of course those guys just blew us off. They said all we saw was a bear. It sounded fishy though. Like they'd already told that story. Like it was rehearsed. I know that that thing wasn't a bear. It definitely wasn't a damn bear. And I know three other people that saw the same thing that I did. We can all testify that what we saw was something that nobody knows exists, and if they do, they don't want to talk about it. We ended up having the rangers get our things for us, and when we picked them up, all we got was a bunch of attitude and people staring at us like we were crazy. I didn't really care, though. We tried to warn these guys, and they didn't believe us. Or if they did, they were covering it up. I think it goes without saying that none of us ever went back there. Actually, the four of us never even really take camping trips anymore unless it's in one of those reserve spots where there's a bunch of people around. Definitely no off-the-grid camping. The four of us are still extremely close. We see each other all the time. We still talk about that to this day. And once we heard about what a dogman is, we realized that that might actually be what we saw all those years ago. As far as I know, nobody else has ever witnessed something like that there, or if they have, they don't talk about it. I openly talk about it. I don't care. I didn't for a long time, because I thought people would think I was crazy, but I need to warn people about what's out there.
My kids know about it, and they're old enough to be driving around now. They still want me to take them out there so they can see them for themselves, and I tell them that they're crazy, and if I ever catch them out there investigating, they'll be grounded until they're my age. I hope this story can shed some light on what's truly out there at night, and hopefully it can warn people to go out there with protection, if you have to go out there at all. For me, nowadays I just prefer to stay in the city. I know it sucks here, and there's a lot of people here, but I think in the city you have less of a chance of getting attacked by a dog man. Have a good night. Did you click on the link to view my book? If you haven't, you probably should. I guarantee you, you won't regret it. It's a hell of a story. Nighty night creatures of the night. And remember, don't miss your chance to scream.